Jailbreak, February 8th, 1922. Early hours. Everything in this godforsaken town is out to kill me. Every, around every corner, some hideously tainted thug is searching. I've managed to avoid them so far, but poor Rebecca wasn't so lucky. It's starting to look hopeless. Only Mackie doesn't seem to want me dead. Maybe he has ulterior motives. His mention of investors in this town and his knowledge of the esoteric order clearly points to some level of involvement. Still, he told me where to find Brian Burnham. And he seems to pose no immediate threat. Even so, his apparent understanding of things in his mouth is unnerving. Am I becoming paranoid? After what I have seen and experienced, how could I know? The strain is certainly having an effect on my nerves. I'm beginning to hear and see things that can't possibly be real. I need to ignore these distractions. If I want to get out of here alive, the best chance is to find Brian and break him out of the jailhouse. To do that, I'll need a plan. Alright, we are going to be careful now. Because there are... There are some police officers behind here. We want to be careful not to get caught by them. There's one. Oh, please don't see me. Probably nothing. Oh, it's ropes. Okay. Oh. That's right. Nothing. Not a cat. Not a private investigator. Okay, we are getting visions of somewhere around here. Oh, there he is, real close. And I think I can see someone else way down at the end of the hall, or the alleyway. No, it's Birch. No, Birch and Ropes. We should be out there, Nathan. Help me with the hunt. You have your orders. We're well, not going to put ourselves in sneak mode. They'll yield us not to favor with the order. I heard Dave out. The chief's always up there napping. Why ain't he out here with us? His time draws nigh. Mark and Rudder Guard probably no more. He'll take to the water. Then it'll be me taking charge around here. Things will be Not if I have anything to say about it, Birch. I'm gonna beat you over the head with a pipe. Okay. Now, Ropes has gone off to the right, and Birch looks like he's going back the way he came. A crowbar. That could come in handy. I thought I saw him go this way. Back here would be a great hiding spot. Alright, Jack, I'm gonna take your word for that. Now we got a crowbar. I'm gonna roll all Half Life up in here. Oh, what do we got here? The deep ones. Shh. I'm a private detective. My name's Jack Walters. I'm looking for Burnham. Look, fella, I'm Burnham. What the hell is it you want? Oh, hey, we Why found did you. you knock off the First National and the Variety Store? What? I'm the manager of First National. Why the blazes would I rob my own store? They haven't even charged me with anything. <laughs> Look, just clear off before you get me in trouble. If Garrison spots you, he'll scream this joint down. Garrison? Yeah, Henry Garrison. He's the crazy fella in the next cell. Whenever he throws a fit, one of Martin's mom are all over this alley like a rash. Especially tonight. He seemed incredibly twitchy. Much more than usual. 
Well, I think we're going to take advantage of that. Now, will he take... You're supposed to give him something. I don't see it anymore. Oh, there it is. It's no use. It's too dark out here. I need to get inside. Alright, yeah, we'll have to go inside. It's alright, so one of these dudes is nuts. And we can get him worked up. I see your eyes in the window. Yeah. Hiding in the blackness. <laughs> Alright. Now, if he's wigging out, maybe the guards will come. We can sneak by him. Something outside must have set him crazy. I suppose I'd better check it out. Alright, looks like it's working. Alright, you go right ahead, Robots. I'm just gonna walk in here, close this door, and lock you out. Okay, now let's be careful. There may still be people in here. Stop mocking me. There ain't nothing here. Those are feet. Right. He'll be back at any moment. Hide. Hide. Up. Oh, did he see me? Is he just being noisy? Oh, that sounds like the "We saw you" whistle. Oh, we're still full up on healing gear. Yeah, we'll hide in the bathtub. Maybe not. The bath is encrusted with filth, and there appears to be shreds of skin. The sink has been blocked up, leaving it full of scummy water. I'm not touching it. I don't it. blame you. Okay, there's a more whole way to check this way. So let's go take a look. Right, anything worthwhile in here? Guessing some shotgun shells. Ooh, geese. The keys to the cells. Now I can free Brian. The sink is grimy, and there are traces of some sort of discolored membrane. Yummy. Okay. Let's go up those other set of stairs. It won't open. Okay, so only one place. Check behind there. Check behind okay. where? Now, I get the feeling our buddies downstairs and there's something's up. It's unlocked. Ooh. It's Thomas Waits. Ramona's death must have driven him to cutting his own throat. Get yourself Come back to us, Jack. Oh, stop it, voices. I won't take them. I wonder what would happen if we just let you out. He's crazy. I don't think it would be the sharpest plan to let him out. No, maybe we should let him out and let him go fool around with the guards. Okay. 
This door is still bolted shut. It's unlocked. Henry. What do we got over here? Henry. An old ship's log marked with the name Obed Marsh. No. Oh, he's an important person. No. Let's see what those have to say. March 6th, 1823. Still on route to China, eastward from Mo. I got Otehite, or Tahiti, as it's so so called. We've encountered an island that does not appear on our charts. I ordered the anchor drop close ashore and send the longboat for fresh water and supplies. The islanders are not interested in trading for gold, of which they apparently have a great quantity. I asked after its source in hopes of setting up a mining or milling operation on shore. In response to my questioning, I was taken to a smaller island nearby and shown some stone ruins, apparently of great antiquity. The designs carved upon them are like nothing I've ever seen in all my travels. This, they say, is the city of the sea gods. It can be prevailed upon to give them gold for the asking. I suspect it is the remnant of a higher civilization, now lost. The natives evidently found the gold amongst the ruins. I questioned the island's chief elder at length about the ruins, and was answered the retelling of legends so savage and fantastic that I wonder at them. Perhaps when the gold is secured and with my own fortune I shall reveal the island's location and open it to scholarship. I have been traded for a large quantity of gold in addition to the needed water and fresh food. We resumed our voyage. I impressed upon the crew the need for absolute silence about this island. For if word were to get out to others, we'd surely go there. Shortly before our departure, Chief Walukea made me gifts of several small metal discs, evidently of the same workmanship as the runes. By means of these, in certain chance, he said the sea gods can be summoned and induced to bring their gifts. June 4th, 1838. Revisiting the mysterious island, we could find no trace of the people with whom we traded so many years. Their villages are razed to the ground, and no trace can be found of them. It appears that some other tribe has attacked and destroyed them. The men are much dismayed that we shall no longer be able to obtain gold here, unless we discover its source for ourselves. A day's searching amongst the rune availed us nothing, although certain of the crew were troubled by the nightmare subsequently. It appears this voyage is destined to be without profit, must return to Innsmouth with both hands and pockets empty. Most troubling turn of events. The town has come to rely upon us, and on the gold that we bring back to make up for the trade that was lost when the War of 1812 ended. What shall become of our home port now, and us along with it? August 18, 1838. While looking over the souvenirs and curiosities I collected over my Pacific voyages, Seeking some comfort in happier memories, I happened upon the strange metal disc given to me by old Walukea and his people. I had quite forgotten about them, the stories he told me about the gold-bearing gods from the sea, but now an idea is stirring within me. I do not know whether to embrace it as in maps, as in this last hope, or to concede that desperation has driven me insane. Am I mad? The gold we brought from the island was real enough. Perhaps the sea gods are also real. A sailor to far ports sees many strange things and learns to keep an open mind. After much effort and recreation, <clears throat> after much effort and recreation, <clears throat> I have remembered the chance Walkea taught me. Tonight I shall roll out to Devil's Reef and try them, along with the discs. Perhaps the sea gods will save us. If not, I shall acknowledge my folly and retire to the asylum. Later that night, the sea gods are real. I have seen them, spoken with them. I carry some of their gold, a token of more to come. I assume I was assured. Or the price. Yet can any price be too high when one's home is at stake? Innsmouth shall rise again. July 23rd, 1846. This is the day of crisis for Innsmouth. I and those loyal to me 
been seized and thrown in the jail by our pious neighbors. Ready enough to enjoy the prosperity I have returned to the town. They scruple at the means I use and the power I wield. They must be taught a lesson. They have no idea of the powers they seek to defy. The terrible bargain I made was irreparable. And by locking me up, they bring down great peril to the town. The very town they would save from my influence. But it's too late for salvation. As surely as I know the morning tide will rise, I know that those from the reef will come to Innsmouth. They will come in search of those things I have been prevented from giving them. And they will come, as they will come to punish those who have prevented me. Little do the righteous dreams of horror that will visit Innsmouth at night there will be great destruction. 1846 will be recorded in the town's annals as a year of unparalleled calamity. I shall make certain that 1846 also marks the beginning of a new age, an age in which no threat to our path is tolerated. From this year on, I shall play the twi I shall pay play the tyrant. And my descendants shall do so after me. We do so to avert a greater evil. Dagon, I, uh, I, uh, Batong, Batong! They're gonna find you, Jack, and the order shows no mercy. <gasps> well, they might. <laughs> have to catch me There's no time for that right now. It's not safe. It's not safe. <laughs> what are we gonna do with you? That's not a good idea. Mm. <laughs> I can hear them. I hear them in the walls. Rats. Rats in the walls. I hear them. It's about rats. <laughs> so very tasty. I don't remember seeing any rats. Those feet still up. Close that door. So that we can't bolt it. Ooh. Now we're getting somewhere. Come on, Jack. A pistol and a shotgun at last. The aim button can be used with most weapons to aid accuracy. Aim for the legs to slow down an advancing enemy, or hit the head for heavy damage. Avoid firing too quickly, and don't forget to reload. And we'll just take that. A police whistle. Hmm. Could prove useful. Where next? Over there. I, uh, I, uh, Kathula Fatang. I kind of just want to go out here and shoot. Uh, those ropes over here. I just kind of want to shoot ropes right in the face. He's over there. Hi, bud. Okay, let's go put some distance between us and him. How am I doing on ammo? Okay, 19 shots for the shotgun. I'm guessing 41 for the pistol. Attention over here. We we'll run back in here. I thought I heard something. See, 
looks uh, looks okay out front. Visions. There's something down there. Yep. From the mess, it looks like something or someone was killed here recently. The grate's too heavy to lift with my bare hands. Well, that's all right. I think we're just going to leave that alone. It's a good hiding spot. Okay. One dude definitely over there. Oh. One dude over there. Oh, was that was that Birch we just killed? Please tell me that was Birch we just killed. It make me very happy knowing that he's dead. Still somebody over there. It's alright, he ran right by me. Two somebodies. He's right over there. Another dude is right over there. All right, here's hoping they don't see me. Sneak up on this guy and whack him. Who goes there? Yeah, I can. Okay, there are definitely dudes over there. What about the one guy that I saw over here? Buddy. So much for sneaky stealthy man. Okay, it's save point. I think we'll take advantage of it. Oh, 
jeez. We'll just keep coming back. Sure hope they don't think we spawn indefinitely. Getting the feeling they do though, so. Rate's too heavy to lift with my well. bare hands. There we go. Should have thought of that in the first place. Okay, save point here too. Whatever's down here. Oh! That's what's down here. The ghost of Ramona. Yeah, Jack, it's a dead rat. It's a dead rat, too. Corpse of a rat. I suppose it might come in useful. Yeah, Jack does not like it down here. His heart is currently beating a mile per minute. Oh, where does this go? Looks like we're in a garage or something. And more ammo. Okay. And what do we got here? Ooh, rifle cartridges. Okay. Doors bolted shut. Well, let's change that. All right, cool. We're back out here. It's blocked. I can't go that way. It won't open. We happen to know somebody who was uh, screaming about rat corpses. So let's go see if we can't find him. Okay, I see the dude way down there. Somebody over there too. Or was or did I? Oh, there is somebody now. Hey buddy. Poor wretched. Hey buddy. You want this dead rat? Lost his mom. He's crazy. I don't think it'd be the sharpest plan to let him. That's not a good idea. Look, Henry. The rats are dead. There are no rats in the walls. Mm. 
Jesus, no! Stop it, you crazy bastard! Well, just like that. This is the rap sheet for Henry Garrison. No charges been listed. Yeah, I thought I heard somebody screaming about me. It's unlocked. Here we have. The lunatic dropped a piece of paper. Mm. <laughs> what does the lunatic's piece of paper have to say? The proviso to all oaths. I, Dagon, I submit to the authority of the esoteric order of Dagon. If I should betray these sacred oaths, I am there to try and to punish according to the ancient laws and the extent of my transgressions. I, Dagon. I, Dagon, I swear I shall keep the faith of the Deep Ones in all things. I shall not resist their will, nor shall I betray their secrets. The second oath. I, Dagon, I swear I shall serve the Deep Ones in all things, as they shall command me to the fullest extent of my ability. I, Dagon, I, Hydra, I take this child of Dagon and Hydra as my wife or husband, and take him to my home, to beget and raise children, so that the race and the faith shall continue to prosper. Oh, so that's what happened with our wife. He did the third oath, and Rebecca happened, and Rebecca's horrible mother happened. I'm not going anywhere till I know I can trust you. You know what? That's reasonable. Here you go. No. Ruth Billingham gave me this. What? And this is the photograph I gave her before. before. Oh, damn. I've been so foolish. If Ruth trusts you, Jack, then so do I. Please, hurry and get this door open. Okay. It's unlocked. The garage on the main street holds an old automobile. It should be able to get us clear of town. Should be able to? If we can just make it through the patrols. Lead the way, Jack. I'm still hearing crazy mumble. Why are you going up there? We need to get outside. I'm going up here, because there's a healing kit that I may be able to take. Alright, buddy, move. Quickly, we have to get away from Agreed. the jail. Move. Turn out so good. Ryan? Ryan? Ryan, did you get stuck on something? I'm just gonna hope that Brian made it there okay. What are we still doing here? Looking for you. Come on, buddy. Are locked. You won't be able I, to get in that way. I just opened it. It's no use, Jack. We need to try another All way. Alright, fine. Get the long way. Come on, Jack. We need to get off the streets. I hear you, man. I hear you. Oh, oh okay. 
Okay, we're gonna do our whistle trick again. Brian, move. Quickly, we have to get away from the jail. It won't budge. We're just gonna hope for the best. Damn it, that door won't stay open. I'll have to lead Brian in through the sewers. Really? Alright, where is Brian? Brian. I'm not doing so good here, Jack. Let's see if I'm bandaging you up or bandaging me up. Should have followed me into the sewers. Come here. Brian Burnham's dead. Great. No. Well, I had enough sense to save before this. Okay, we're back. We've got Brian. It's unlocked. The garage on the main street. We'll see if we can do it right this time. It should be able to get us clear of town. Should be able to. If we can just make it through the patrols. Lead the way, Jack. Well, this time follow. We'll blow our whistle over here. Let's get going. There's something wrong down here. Something very wrong. There is a lot wrong down here. Take my word for it. Yeah, you got Shagoths. I need a whole of entering party to get rid of them. Oh, you again. Bravo, Jack. Congratulations on your new promotion to Innsmouth's enemy number one. Shut your trap, Mackie. You're not a factory inspector. Who do you work for? Okay, detective. I'll come clean. I'm an undercover agent for the United States Treasury Department. We've been working closely with the FBI on a secret investigation of Innsmouth. I'm the inside man. Really? What have you been able to find out? The Innsmouth look, Jack. It's at the heart of the problems in this town. More than half the population must be infected by now. The spreading of that contagion, or whatever the hell you want to call it, is the key. I just know it. This is all very interesting, fellas, but we gotta get out of Innsmouth with Ruth. She's waiting for us at some old fishing cannery, just past the station to Rowley. 
Listen, Jack. There are some agents watching the road not far past that spot. If you can make it there, you'll be safely picked up. I need you to do something for me. You can do it while I get this thing started. When they arrested me, they took a brooch I was carrying. It belonged to Ruth. It carries her picture inside. I won't leave it behind. Uh, all right. Are you crazy? Sure, let's we don't do have this. time for this. They'll be holding it in the jail office safe. I don't know the combination. I overheard Ropes talking to one of the other guards. He said something about an important date. And someone called Captain Obed Marsh. If you want to get in through the back door, just knock and I'll open it for you. Oh, I mean that back door. Okay. Well, we happen to have Obed Marsh's diary. And he said there would be a day that would that would that would live in infamy, infamy, infamy. Someday I'll get it right. All right. 1846. So we're going to go with that as the password and see if we're right. Going back in the dang. Not one thing is another with these people. You know what? You gotta give these fish guys some uh, some credit. They can see you from anywhere. Tricks to find the safe. I don't know if seeing the safe. We'll close that door. Ah, uh, what we got here? Okay, what do we say? Eighteen forty-seven. Six, one, eight, four, six. Yeah, let's go with that. This must be Ruth's brooch. More visions of fish people. Well, you can close the door. What's wrong with you? Here, here's your brooch. It is. Thanks, Jack. Ruth would have been heartbroken if I'd lost it. Yeah, poor girl. I'll be done in just a second. Hold on. I'm finished. Get in the back. I know the way. Oh, 
All right. Jack, I think I saw some ammo in the back of the truck. We'll need it. Yeah, yeah, we will. 